Gustavo. Magic was also asked uh, who he would compare Alonzo Ball to. He said simply himself. Tracy, since you have an opinion here on this team, yeah. do you see a little Magic Johnson well, I, and Alonzo Ball? I, I do. I see the court vision, uh, being able to, you know, distribute the ball, make his players uh, better around him. Um, doesn't have the size. I think he's obviously a little bit more mm -hmm. athletic than Magic. But, yeah, his court vision is is pretty damn good to be an 18, 19-year-old kid. What do you think, Paul? I, I compare him more than Jason Kidd. <laughs> Lonzo can't make these passes behind the back, behind the neck, through the legs. Come on, Magic. I think he just you're you're about selling yourself short, Magic. This guy is good, but he's no Magic Johnson. He's more Jason Kidd. Now, Jason Kidd was a you know, he, he, too. Now. Okay, so this is where, Ramona, I'm going to pick on your inside knowledge right. here. So you've had a lot of conversations with a lot of people yeah. in the Lakers about Lonzo Ball. You did a whole Lonzo Ball story. Mm -hmm. This is your Venn diagram of expertise. Is Magic Johnson seeing Lonzo Ball clearly and evaluating him clearly, given all of the outside pressure and expectation on the franchise right now and that the Ball well, family is creating? You saw him go to UCLA three or four times throughout the year, right? So he saw him live and up close. He also saw him lose. He saw him lose to De'Aaron Fox in Kentucky in the, the NCAA championship game, in the tournament, right? So, uh, you know, he's seen Lonzo at his best, and he's seen Lonzo when he didn't have it. So for him to make that statement is saying a lot. And, I, you know, I'm with you, Paul. Like, I grew up in L.A. when Magic was playing mm -hmm. with the Showtime Lakers. So I'm like, I, I can't even put anyone in that category. <laughs> I can't like, put anybody right? in that category. Like, but, I just can't. But I think it's an interesting statement because I don't I've, – I've dealt with Magic a little bit now as a reporter, mm -hmm. and I don't think he has the ability to – Spin you in a way like he's not doing a no look pass, like he's not talking up Lonzo because he really, he really does, wants to, to build him up so that somebody will want to trade for him. Like he's not doing, you know, like in mm -hmm. the draft, everybody gives you a little head fake, right? Like, mm -hmm. oh, we love this guy, we yeah. love, it. and that's not who they actually want to take. Right, right. I don't think Magic's doing that. No, I think he really the, does was, like him. Yeah. Whereas like most people in the draft, like if, mo if their lips are moving, you think they're lying, right? Because right. right. that's right. what they're doing <laughs> this right. time of year. Right. So I, I do think he, I genuinely think Magic loves this kid and loves the way he plays, but mostly I think. It's the style. It's that up-tempo mm -hmm. style. It's mm -hmm. the way that Lonzo was very unselfish. When you talk to any talent evaluator, it's the first thing that comes out of the mouth. He's an unselfish player. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what they need to run the style that Luke Walton wants to play. However, what else does Luke Walton need to run that team? Long defensive <laughs> players, right? right. Look, look at the Warriors. Would the Warriors be the Warriors without Clay Thompson? Right. Okay, Clay Thompson is as important to Steph Curry as anything. Well, all right. I can they say do. is if he does draft Lonzo, if they hang on to it, if they don't trade the pick and he goes all in on this kid, mm -hmm. it better work because he is so clearly telegraphing what he wants to do and all the outside mm -hmm. pressure there. I, I don't know if the Lakers can handle this. If it was another. If there's one happen. franchise in the league that can handle a pressure it's like the this. We'll see.